Hello, welcome to the Monday, December 13th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, Friday, I guess I was lucky in the sense that I was able to get a log for J or log for shell, as it's now called, into the podcast. It certainly kept us busy on Friday and over the weekend. Monday at noon Eastern time, we'll have a special live stream with uh, Boyan and uh, Mick in order to discuss some of the issues around a log for shell. So if you have some time, join in. And let me here just uh, summarize a little bit some of the things that we learned this weekend. So the vulnerability here is in the log4j2 library. And the issue is that this library is used well for logging as the name implies, but it has the ability to actually sort of expand uh, certain JNDI strings that are being included in the logs. And this can lead to remote code execution. It's triggered essentially by tricking log4j into logging a specific string. So in order to make an exploit work, you have to find some software that uses this library. And then you have to find a way to feed a string to that software that is being logged via log4j. And this process makes it a little bit tricky to figure out which software exactly is vulnerable, which one is not vulnerable. So log4j being included and used by the software is your first uh, pointer that it's possibly uh, vulnerable, but some software, for example, Elasticsearch has a special uh, Java security manager included that limits what libraries like log4j are able to do. So in this case, uh, you are not vulnerable. And for other software, like for example, VMware's vCenter, uh, you are vulnerable, but uh, you have to find uh, the right kind of way to expose uh, vCenter uh, to the exploit string. So it's actually being logged by log4j. So a simple exploit as you have sort of seen them around may not work in this case. The standard test that a lot of people are using is where they're using this JNDI string and then they're using an LDAP uh, command and a host name, and then they're looking uh, for DNS lookups for the host name. There have been some false positives here. If the host name, for example, is observed by, let's say, a next generation firewall and IPS, uh, or in some case, even IDS and such, it may actually do a lookup on the host name and trigger the DNS lookup without actually triggering the exploit in the target system that you are testing. So one suggestion, for example, here by Boyan is that uh, you're including some environment variables uh, in that string. In that way, you may still see the DNS lookup for the string with the environment variables or just the partial uh, host name, which would indicate it was not triggered by log4j. But if you actually see a host name with the environment variables resolved, then you likely triggered the log4j vulnerability. And this has really been the theme sort of this weekend. There are a lot of little details about this vulnerability and that makes it difficult to really accurately know if you are exposed or not. The safe thing, of course, is to apply patches as vendors release them. And that's the other problem here. There are patches available now for the log4j library itself. But uh, of course, that's only sort of half the battle. Uh, there is plenty of software that includes log4j and that software typically has to be updated as well. And vendors are rolling out patches. So uh, look out you know, for whatever software you're using. If it uses Java, there's a possibility it's vulnerable but it also needs to actually use log4j. And uh, you know, then of course there are cases where log4j is included in the software, but it's not necessarily uh, used uh, to log anything that the attacker can control. Uh, not that common, but all of this of course is possible. This is a warmable vulnerability. I have not seen any warm out there yet. As far as exploits go, we do see plenty of exploits that either do the JNDI and then LDAP or LDAP-S 
In some cases, Base64 encoded commands are right included in the request, uh, but uh, that may or may not actually work. As far as obfuscation goes, uh, there are uh, certainly a number of uh, scans that are now using environment variables, either to avoid the false positives uh, or uh, to avoid detection uh, by any kind of uh, signatures. And of course, uh, RMI instead of LDAP and LDAP-S is also starting uh, to be used. Our main focus here from our detection capability is HTTP requests, but uh, this is exploitable by anything that's being logged. So theoretically, you know, it could be if a seam, for example, is vulnerable, then anything that seam is logging, whether that's email subjects or even addresses, whether or not uh, this is like DNS host names, anything, any string that is being logged by log4j could potentially be used to exploit this vulnerability. As far as payloads go, at this point, we are just seeing a lot of scanning to catalog vulnerable systems. Part of them are coming from researchers. We also have spotted uh, some uh, crypto coin miners and sort of your generic backdoors where it's really a little bit hard to tell uh, what sort of the actual uh, end game here is of the particular attacker. On Friday morning, we raised our Infocon level to yellow for this particular reason. And we'll probably keep it like this uh, till Tuesday morning, just so if we get the full workday on uh, Monday and get everybody's attention. But at this point, I would think that anybody uh, who is at all sort of in touch with uh, the security news uh ecosystem has heard about this vulnerability. So getting the word out is not necessarily a problem at this point. It's more about you know, how can we actually get some actionable things that people can do to protect themselves uh, out there. I'll add links to resources uh, to the show notes. For example, there's a real nice uh, GitHub gist uh, with a list of sort of vendor bulletins out there. And uh, then again, our live stream at noon or quarter past noon, I think, will officially uh, start it uh, on Monday. That's uh, noon Eastern time. Thanks, and that's it for today. Sorry for spending all the time on this vulnerability, but uh, I feel it's important enough, and well, uh, talk to you again tomorrow, and well, maybe something different tomorrow, and also remember, well, Tuesday is also Patch Tuesday. Thanks.